In these modern times, addressing global environmental concerns has a very high priority. But this wasn't always the case. Let's delve into a historical event that left an indelible mark on London and changed the course of environmental policy forever. I'm talking about the Great Smog of London, a deadly environmental disaster which gripped the city in a toxic shroud in December 1952, turning the smog into a silent mass murderer, killing thousands of people in its wake. But what actually is smog? The word smog was coined in the early 20th century, and is a combination of the words smoke and fog. Many residents of cities such as Los Angeles or Beijing are more than familiar with the brown haze that often descends upon their cities. But there are actually two types of smog, photochemical smog and sulfurous smog. The type of smog experienced by LA is photochemical smog, often referred to as summer smog and is typical in subtropical areas. It occurs mainly in the summer months when temperatures hit high levels and is often seen during rush hours in major cities. Photochemical smog is created when nitrogen oxides, such as those produced by car engines, combine with water to form nitric acid or react with sunlight and oxygen to produce ozone. But the London smog was different. Sulfurous smog usually appears in colder months and is a result of particulate matter such as the particulates from burning coal, mixing with cold air to form a thick, sulfurous fog. It's time to do a little bit of chemistry now, but before we go on, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this video. During the combustion of sulfur-containing fossil fuels, such as coal or oil, sulfur reacts with oxygen to produce sulfur dioxide. The sulfur dioxide can then react further with more oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. And then finally, the sulfur trioxide reacts with water, in this case from ordinary fog, to produce sulfuric acid in the form of acid aerosols. And it is these aerosols which are harmful to human health, as well as vegetation. The effects of precipitation of these aerosols, often called acid rain, can frequently be seen in the damage of woodlands in Northern Europe. In the mid 20th century, London was in the midst of the post-war industrial boom, and coal was the primary source of energy, both for heating and industrial processes. The cold damp climate, coupled with the emissions from burning fossil fuels, meant that sulfurous smog was a frequent visitor to the city, and was known to the locals as pea supers. The Great Smog of London was a particularly lethal combination of fog and air pollution that affected the city in December 1952. A period of unusually cold weather meant that Londoners were using their coal fires for heating even more than usual. This combined with an anti-cyclone, fog and windless conditions, collected airborne pollutants to form a thick layer of smog which enveloped the city. It started on Friday the 5th of December and lasted a number of days, bringing the city to its knees. Transport came to a standstill, despite the best efforts of police to keep it moving. Public transport ceased due to the poor visibility, apart from the London Underground, and the ambulance service also stopped. The smog was so dense that it even seeped indoors, resulting in the cancellation or abandonment of concerts and film screenings, as well as many outdoor sports events. Eventually, on 9th of December, the smog dispersed quickly, when the weather changed, but by then the damage had been done. The smog didn't just obscure visibility, it had become a silent killer. The pollutants in the air led to respiratory issues, aggravating pre-existing health conditions and caused thousands of premature deaths. Hospitals were overwhelmed with distressed patients, wheezing and spluttering unable to breathe, and the mortality rate soared. Undertakers ran out of coffins, unable to cope with the extra deaths. Government medical reports after the event estimated that 4,000 people were killed by the smog, and another 100,000 suffered ill health effects. However, more recent research suggests that the figure could have been even higher, as high as 10 to 12,000 deaths. In the aftermath of the Great Smog, there was a public outcry for action. The government was forced to address the environmental crisis, 
leading to the Clean Air Act of 1956. This groundbreaking legislation aimed to control domestic and industrial smoke emissions and eventually improved air quality in the city, although it took a number of years. The legacy of the Great Smog lives on in the history of environmental awareness, serving as a wake-up call for governments worldwide to recognise the serious health risks associated with air pollution. And today we can see the lasting impact of the Clean Air Act and similar regulations in the efforts to combat climate change and protect public health. So there you have it, the story of the Great Smog of London. Thank you for watching and feel free to leave a comment below on what other subjects you would like me to cover in future videos.